We're building a new aluminum expedition sailboat, and over the last 12 months we've been documenting the construction. Check out the build series here if you missed any videos, and add a comment below if you have any additional topics you're interested in. This time we're answering some of the most commonly asked questions we've had, and also do the latest update tour through the hull with the builder pointing out safety features. It's a technical deep dive in aluminum boat building, so stay tuned. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. I am super excited about this boat as she's coming along. It's gonna be a couple more months and she's really gonna to start to take shape. We're excited about it and it's gonna be Next summer we'll be out for real sailing, but we're going to get uh, some winter shakedown cruises this winter, I think. And we are so excited to see her coming together. Our first aluminium sailboat, our first metal sailboat, and our first real pilot house expedition sailboat for heading up to the cold climates, Svalbard and Norway and the Lofoten Islands. And I'm just really stoked about this. There's just bike paths all over the island. And this is a really cool, super popular way to get around in the Netherlands by bicycle. In preparation for all our voyages, we like to learn a few helpful words and phrases if the language there is foreign. I find there's a big value in learning to speak at least a few words in any language for any place we go to, especially if we're there for more than a couple of weeks. In the Netherlands, almost everyone speaks English, but I still find that you get a very nice reaction if you at least give a bit of a try. So I've been studying Dutch using Babbel, the sponsor of this week's video. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world. The lessons are easy to follow and help you learn a language through real life conversations. De fiets. De fiets is the bicycle, a de fietser is a male bicyclist, and a fietster is a female bicyclist. When I first saw the sign Fietspad, I thought it meant a footpath, because it sounds like footpath. But really, it's bicycle path. Fiets is bicycle. Lessons are designed by expert language teachers to prepare you for situations that you will actually encounter in real life when speaking the language you've chosen to learn. Thank Thank you well. Thank you well. Babbel also offers a 20-day money-back guarantee. Maybe you have a trip coming up this summer, and learning a new language would help add to the experience. De Fietser. De Fietser. So I invite you to give Babbel a try. Click the link below to get 60% off your subscription. Tell us what language you've always wanted to learn and why in the comments below. So I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about how systems are gonna be installed in the boat coming up. Yeah. We're gonna be putting some insulation and Yeah, paint we have, uh, so as you have seen, there are holes in the, in the frames. Uh, through the holes, there will become pipes where we put the electric cables through. So we can go for forwards, backwards, easily with cables. Also later, when you want to install something extra, there is enough space to put an extra cable through the, uh, to the pipes. We are inside the hull now. And uh, you can see all the frames. Uh, where the, and into the frames you see the holes. Through the holes we can put cable lines, cable pipes, and uh, we put, we put them therein. Through the pipes there will be, will be the cables. On the end of the pipe, depending on where it goes to, is always an opening. Also in the uh, inter uh, interior, later, it will be possible to get behind it. So if you have to put a cable, extra cable inside, it is possible to do. Even uh, after years, you want to be something extra on board. Uh, this uh, possibility. So, can so, you show how this would work with the pipes? Well, the pipes are of different size, but uh, they will be the size of the holes that are inside here. So they are quite here. But you see here on the up, you have uh, bigger holes than here. So uh, we we use the pipes to fit in, and uh, so we have a lot of possibilities to bring cables forward and aft. So the so basically you're going to put in the the plastic piping conduits yeah, yeah yeah and no no wires and then you put the spray foam no the we will be uh, before the spray foam we put the pipes in and the wires the wires will be inside inside as well okay. yeah and then we will spray it 
and of course, uh, if there is no opening from the pipe in between, then uh, the pipe will be totally in the foam. Yeah, and if there is an opening because you have to hear uh, something electric where the, pi the lines comes out, then you have the possibility to go uh, to the pipe and take the cables out. And so, so it is depending on the size. Eh? Some some cables come from fore from the fore to aft, and some cables have to be uh, halfway, and some uh, so so that's all the pipes have different lengths. They are not going from forward and backward uh, to the whole boat, but uh, all the time. Uh, yeah, depending on where we need the cables. Hmm? One of the first things that will be installed in the hull will be the Lumar bow thruster. It needs to be installed as far forward in the hull as possible while still being deep enough below the waterline so it won't draw air in when it operates. Lumar recommends the thruster tunnel be below the waterline by a minimum of 75% the diameter of the tunnel. In our case, the thruster is set down 185 millimeters, or just over 7 inches under the waterline, which more than satisfies the Lumar guideline. So now we have a large electric motor well up forward and need to connect it to the battery bank. That means running wires from the main 48 volt bank under the guest cabin forward along a conduit to the thruster. Ideally, we can make the shortest possible wiring run through a conduit like this. The thruster tunnel is already installed and painted. First of all, we put the, the pipes and the cables in, and afterwards we will isolate the hull. Insulate, yeah. Insulate, insulate. sorry. Yeah. Insulate the hull and, uh, uh, with foam. So the pipes will be uh, half in, into the foam. And uh, that, that's the way they fixed already uh, into the ship. Uh, you see the drains on the side, and then we put uh, the falls on and we can put stuff overboard. They are all welded in. We not make through hull fittings, but they are all welded in. And in the front you see the, the tanks. The tanks are under the floor. The three holes in the forward, the, the forward tank are for the drink water tanks. So on both sides you have a drink water tank and in the aft there are the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks will be just aluminium and the water tanks, they are uh, sandblasted and they will be, have a special coating for fresh water tanks. So it keeps uh, the, the water out of the aluminium and otherwise you, can, you could do, you could do uh, make water, fresh water in the aluminium tanks, but the chance of a smile or the chance of a taste is there. There was because we make an, uh, a coating inside the tanks, you have uh, good water. Here you see the, the part of the aft cabin. The, here will a sofa, and under the under the sofa there will be the aft cabin. And under the aft cabin floor we will have the lithium super B batteries uh, because of the hybrid uh, propulsion we have on board. So uh, we have about uh, 28 kilowatts of uh, batteries uh, for 48 volts, and we have also a 24 volt system for the rest of the boat and uh, it's also with lithium batteries. Uh, only the starting battery will be a normal battery uh, and further everything is uh, going uh, over the lithium batteries. You see here all, all this will be about until here uh, filled with, with isolation foam. So the whole all the aluminium you will see is isolated foam. The bilges below this stringer on each side will be painted and above this level will be coated with insulation foam roughly 6 cm thick. Straight foam will be totally on the, of course on the roof, uh, here on the decks, totally uh, the whole the hull uh, until about this, this rib on this level, you can see it, yeah, uh, that will be foamed and underneath it will be painted. You need foam until the waterline. But we're going uh, because the, the water line will be about at this level. Yeah? There's normally the foam until here will be enough, but we're going further under the foam, uh, under the water line uh, to, make, uh, to make the isolation, and only uh, the bills itself will be uh, painted. Oh, yeah, you have the, we, we have welded all the true hulls 
they are all welded into the boat. There are not uh, uh, no true hull fittings made. All are welded. So uh, you see different pipes already there. We put a valve on it, and then it is ready. So it is a part of the construction, and uh, of course. Uh, uh, on an aluminium boat, you don't want to have to. Uh, yeah, if you make a true hull, you have to make it in, in plastic ones, and you don't can use uh, the bronze or uh, messing ones you normal use. The boat have two separate uh, bilses because of the keel construction, so they are separated. So we put two electric bilse pumps in the saloon or in the in the forward bilse, so you can empty the bilse. In the engine room there will be one electric pump and also a manual hand pump uh, to uh, empty the bills there. We'll do a separate video on the engine installation with the hybrid drive unit since that project is coming up soon. So the next stage is here. They're doing outside the some painting finishing on the deck? Yeah, maybe uh, we will paint uh, the deck. Uh, we start with the top of the pilot house. The top of the pilot house will be light grey and the rest of the boat will be uh, Matterhorn white. Uh, that's a nice color, a lot of uh, special super yachts are all, all in Matterhorn white. And then we go inside. Um, a lot of aluminium yachts have leave the bills as it is. But uh, of course, uh, when there is something coming into the bills, uh, some other metal, so it is a little bit dangerous. And also, uh, I find out when you have an, an aluminium bills and you open your floors, you always have a little smell. So we painted all the parts under the floor level will be painted. Uh, so that they will be all white from back to aft. Engine room will be totally white. Uh, it is easy to clean, no smell afterwards, and uh, less chance of when you lose a bolt or anything like that, you get problems with it. Also, the, the lockers in the aft, the anchor locker will be uh, sprayed with paint. So we're leaving the saloon and going up into the forward cabin. We are now in the forward cabin. Here in this area there will be the toilet and the shower. And in the front there will be, will be the bed. There will be a 48 volt bow prop in the boat uh, from, uh, from Lumar. And we will be fitting in there. There you see again the true hulls. Uh, I believe these are for the airco system we build in the boat. There will be an air conditioning system installed underneath the forward berth, which will feed cool air out through this plinth already built in the mock-up next door. You have here the possibilities for your shower water to go overboard and anything like that. Was there a reason you decided to go with individual through holes instead of trying to do one big through hole? Yeah, we did in the past be using one big through hole, but uh, if you do it like this, you, you are sure you'll have no problems at all. And if you combine it, uh, it is not also always so good. So that's why we, we do it like this, yeah, just experience. Well, thank you very much for the yeah. tour around. All right. So you don't have to leave the cockpit very often with the rig the way we've got it set up, but this is the route forward. There's gonna be a handrail on the cabin top and then heading up toward the mast, there's stanchions, stanchion bases going in here. And then the mast is about here this boat has very wide decks, which are great for wandering around on, and a massively strong bowsprit with the anchor, 35 kilo anchor on the bow and two forestays. stays. We hope you've enjoyed this update. Stay tuned for more in future videos. As always, thanks for watching and for your comments. We read everyone and it's great to have you along on the adventure. And if you want to be even more involved, consider joining our Patreon group where we have regular get-togethers, Q&As, tutorials, real-time updates, and more. It's a really nice community, and membership helps support the production of Distant Shores videos. We invite you to check it out and look forward to welcoming you.